The LAX is the eighth busiest airport in the world. And the numbers also prove it. Each year, around 75 million people use it, and this figure will only go up with time. Imagine a place this crowded, suddenly bombarded with millions more individuals. If you've ever been to LAX, you know exactly what we're talking about. To make matters worse, Los Angeles is also hosting the 2028 Olympics. So in a few years, millions of game lovers will descend upon the City of Angels. There's a lot that needs to be fixed, starting from the city's metro and ending at the airport. So it's practically a race against time to get it all done by 2028. To get LAX ready, a $30 billion plan is proposed. Everything from new terminals to world-class facilities will be a part of this plan. Let's discover what the new LAX is going to look like. Almost a century ago, the LAX was found. It was merely a few acres of farmland developed into an aviation hub for small aircrafts. At the time, it had only one modest terminal. Fast forward to today, the airport has nine terminals. These terminals are located around a U-shaped path known as the LAX loop. This loop was designed to connect all the terminals and ensure a smooth travel experience for passengers. But in recent years, it has done the opposite. During peak times, it will take you an hour to drive around the whole thing. The lanes are often crowded with Uber, Lyft, taxis, cars, buses, and other forms of transportation. So it's really no surprise why people aren't exactly pleased. But don't take our word for it. Hear it from this couple who have been around the world but recently decided to visit the LAX. We've traveled all around the world. 77 countries, every state in the U.S., every province in Canada. Every continent. Yes, every continent. In our experience, LAX International Airport is the worst airport to fly into. The problem isn't just with the infamous loop. LAX has poor connectivity with public transport, too. That's because historically the airport was designed with car traffic in mind. So if you are new here, good luck finding an Uber or taxi. You're looking for a taxi, you're looking for an Uber, you're looking for something, a bus. This is getting to me, I'm getting angry, no, I'm this sorry. is terrible. You can't find any of that stuff. If that wasn't confusing enough, the thousands of signs will also give you a headache. So how exactly is LA planning to resolve these issues? Especially in light of the upcoming Olympics, LAX is undergoing a $30 billion makeover. This will include adding roads, more check-in counters, and brand new terminals. You see, the main bottleneck for the airport is the roads leading to it. During peak times like weekends, cars can be seen driving bumper to bumper to the LAX. To solve this, nearly eight miles of roads are being added that lead to the airport's central terminal. There are also plans to separate private vehicles, Ubers and buses from the main terminal areas. This includes a dedicated curbside lane for taxis and Uber to avoid confusion. But that's not the fun part yet. LAX is also spending $3 billion on an electric train system. It's called Automated People Mover, or APM. These trains will run on a two-mile-long elevated path around the terminals. Passengers will no longer have to drive around the LAX loop and waste away their time. During peak times, the trains will arrive every two minutes at the station. Since these trains run on a separate path, they will be much faster than individual cars. It will take only 10 minutes by train to reach from one end to the other. The APM will also connect with Metro Line C and K, so you can finally ditch the busy roads and take the easy way out. Moreover, LAX is shifting all rental car facilities to one single spot. This facility will be situated on the eastern side, adjacent to Interstate 405. It will feature 6.4 million square feet of space and house more than 18,000 vehicles. This facility is also connected to the APM trains, allowing seamless travel. All these measures form part of LA's no-car policy for the Olympics. This is a bold claim by Los Angeles. Well, in car-obsessed LA, a car-free Olympics means that for all of the spectator events, uh, you will not be able to drive your car. You'll be able to take public transit. You'll be able to walk or bicycle. Now, LA isn't exactly new to hosting the Olympics. The last time it hosted the Olympics, it was 1984. But we all know it's not 1984 anymore. The population has increased, and so has the number of cars on the roads. 
At least 90% of American households have access to at least one car, and this obsession isn't going to end anytime soon. The recent Olympics in Paris did have its fair share of problems. For example, the Seine River was polluted. The Olympic Village ran out of food and the conditions were so bad that some athletes were seen sleeping in a park. But it did one thing right. Its venues were easily accessible by public transport. You could catch a bus or a metro or even walk your way there. Now that the Olympic flag has arrived in Los Angeles, it has to maintain its past glory. Whenever people talk about the LA Olympics, their mind automatically goes toward the summer of 1984. And what a summer it was. The standards set by LA were quite high. Unlike the last three Olympics, the 1984 games were a financial success. America earned a surplus of $250 million. Previous Olympics hosts like Montreal went bankrupt as they spent millions constructing new venues for the games. Thankfully, LA avoided that mistake. It repurposed many of its existing venues like the LA Coliseum, Rose Bowl, and others. This strategy will also be repeated for the 2028 Olympics. Los Angeles is going to save billions of dollars this way. With the saved cash, it can invest in vital areas like public transport, roads, and aviation. As far as LAX is concerned, its existing facilities are undergoing a complete overhaul. Terminal 1 has seen a $980 million worth of renovation. This included new check-in areas, upgraded ticket counters, and baggage claim systems. Terminal 1 was introduced 40 years ago, just in time for the 1984 Olympics. It has been in desperate need of an upgrade ever since. The new upgrade will bring efficiency and comfort to thousands of tired travelers. In 2021, a bridge was constructed between Terminals 1 and 2. It allows passengers to move between the two buildings without having to be rescreened. In the future, Terminal will also have a connection to the APM trains. Throughout LAX, engineers are constructing vertical cores at all terminals. These are essentially multi-level buildings with a pedestrian walkway to APM trains. Similar to Terminal 1, the Tom Bradley International Terminal was also built in anticipation for the last Olympics. Being the largest terminal at LAX, it primarily serves international flights. This terminal serves 45 airlines and has nine lounges. Over the years, it has undergone several renovations, but never something as big as you're about to see. The Bradley Terminal is about to have a south extension as well as a west extension. In 2021, a new 15-gate concourse was revealed. This extension was known as the West Gates. The building has five floors and serves both international and domestic flights. At the time, this was the largest construction contract in California, amounting to $1.4 billion. It can handle the largest aircraft in the world, the Airbus A380. The Westgate features cutting-edge technology, stunning architecture, and advanced baggage handling. The building's roof is designed to look like an ocean wave. These curves also allow greater sunlight to enter the atrium. Great emphasis has been put on creating a light and airy environment, and the reason is simple. The West Gate is connected to the main terminal via an underground tunnel. While the tunnel is luxurious in itself, it's poorly lit. In order to prevent disorientation to passengers, the West Gate has a three-level atrium filled with daylight. Passengers can also see the Bradley Terminal through its huge glass atrium. The concourse also features 40,000 square feet of space for retail, restaurant, and grab-and-go food offerings. Towards the south, another new concourse is being built. It's called the Midfield Satellite Concourse. The interesting thing about it is the way it's being built. The entire concourse is built in nine segments that are constructed off-site. These segments are being moved and assembled into one building. It's quite satisfying to watch two large segments being joined like Lego pieces. Once all the nine segments are joined, the concourse will be open to the public. Reports indicate completion in 2025. This innovative construction approach is called prefabrication. It basically means building something off-site and assembling it on-site. The upcoming Feymarn Belt Tunnel in Europe is being built in this very way. It consists of 89 concrete segments that will be assembled into one continuous path. We have created an exclusive video about this tunnel on our channel, so if you're interested, you can watch it after this one. Also, if you liked the video so far, kindly take a moment to subscribe to our channel.
we bring the latest news in the construction industry with two fun videos each week. Now, LAX isn't the only airport undergoing a massive change. At least 15 airports across America are undergoing millions of dollars of upgrades. After LAX, the next famous on the list is the JFK Airport. As part of a $19 billion renovation, two giant terminals are being constructed here. For background context, the JFK Airport has confusing terminal numbers. It currently has five terminals numbered 1, 4, 5, 7, and 8. The missing numbers represent terminals that were demolished in the past. To make matters worse, each terminal is managed by the airline serving it. For example, Terminal 5 is operated by JetBlue and Terminal 4 by Delta Airlines. The renovation will oversee the construction of two terminals, a new Terminal 1 and Terminal 6. In addition, the remaining terminals are getting new shops, restaurants, and other upgrades. The entire renovation will wrap up by the year 2028. Second on our list is another New York airport, the tiny LaGuardia. It mostly serves domestic flights, and for most people, it resembles a third world country. These are not our words. If I took you in blindfold and you took to the LaGuardia airport in New York, you must think I must be in some third world country. He's not entirely wrong though. The 85 year old LaGuardia has been cramped and neglected for far too long. It's now getting an $8 billion makeover. The widely despised central terminal building was completely demolished. It was replaced with a spacious Terminal B. And the plan seems to be working. Even after an $8 billion renovation, it's still jarring to hear New Yorkers describe LaGuardia like this. It's a beautiful airport. We've been commenting the whole time we've been here. It's gorgeous. LaGuardia continuously ranked at the dead bottom last year after year, and now, at the top of the charts. Let's hope the recent renovation at the LA has the same public reaction as the one for LaGuardia. However, since LAX is a far bigger and global airport, it will be hard to please everyone. What are your thoughts on the matter? Share them in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.